The Costa Blanca is a beautiful place in sunny Spain, but there's a dark side to it, a very dark side. The world's biggest criminals were residing here, showing off their wealth and enjoying the sun. But then, it all started. A feud erupted and for years on end, the most tragic events took place. No one was safe, not even one of the most well-known figures in the Costa Blanca. His name was Marco. He was a hard-working and very successful businessman. However, was that all there was to him? Just an innocent businessman? How did this innocent businessman then get involved with one of the biggest cartels in the world? Let's dive into the intriguing story of Abdelhadi Marco Yakut, the King of Marbella. Abdelhadi Marco Yakut is born in 1969. He was born and raised in the small Moroccan city Kouribga, which is an hour drive from Casablanca. In the 80s, him, his parents and his siblings moved to Spain. He went on to study business economics and set his goals on having his own company in the future. His Moroccan name was somewhat hard to pronounce for Spanish people, so he decided to change his name to Marco. After finishing his studies and adopting his new name, he is now ready to conquer the Costa Blanca. He started off as a waiter, but shortly after the turn of the century, he already opened his own bar. As the years go by, Marco owned several bars, restaurants, nightclubs and lounges, all situated on the Golden Mile. The Golden Mile is an area along the coast of Marbella. The most luxurious restaurants, hotels and bars are located here, attracting many people with money. Marco is very well connected. A part of his establishments are with the Englishman Wayne Lineker, brother of ex-footballer Gary Lineker. Wayne is also a key player with lots of restaurants and bars all over Europe. Marco managed two of his beach bars in Marbella, the Portside Cafe and the Tibu. If you have been to the Golden Mile before, it is more than likely you have visited one of Marco's bars or restaurants. But were restaurants and bars the only thing Marco was making his money with, or were there other things? The small neighborhood of Las Petunias, in the south Spanish city San Pedro de Alcantara, is one of the most expensive and luxurious neighborhoods situated near Barbea and the Puerto Banas. It's an area where you will see the nicest villas and immediately know you have to have serious money to live there. Marco was one of the people living there. On the 21st of January 2019, just a bit before 3.30 at night, Marco arrived at his home. Marco drove a black Bentley Cabrio with British license plates. An interesting detail is that the Bentley itself was a British configuration as well, so the steering wheel was on the right side. Unknowingly of what was about to unfold, Marco parked his car and was ready to get out. However, before he could, someone that was hiding behind a garbage container suddenly ran up to him. In a matter of seconds, this man unleashed more than 20 rounds, 14 of which struck Marco. Marco tried to get out of his car via the passenger door on the left, but it all went too fast. He stood absolutely no chance. The man ran away to a Volkswagen Golf down the street that was ready to go and fled the scene. Sometime later, the Golf would be found, burned out, in Benna Harvis. A bystander who witnessed the incident immediately called the emergency services, but upon arrival, they quickly concluded it was already too late. Marco was just 49. He was one of the most well-known faces in the areas surrounding Marbella. After what took place on the 21st of January 2019, it was time for police to find out what could be the motive for this and who was behind it. A lot of stories immediately arose as to why this happened to Marco and who did it. But what was the truth? Did Marco live some sort of double life? Spanish police immediately investigated Marco's phone calls and his security cameras. Nothing pointed to any suspects or showing anything out of the ordinary. After his passing, Spanish news outlets dove into his life and revealed interesting information. They reported Marco was named as a prime suspect in a narcotics investigation in the Moroccan city of Uja. For many people familiar to him, it was an absolute shock. They all knew him from one of his establishments and thought he was just a very successful businessman. Someone with a passion for all of his establishments. He would often be at one of his bars or restaurants to interact with his customers. Marco knew it was crucial to keep the rich and famous as his friends, and he always went all out to give them their VIP experience. Shortly after the incident, Marco is buried in Curiba, Morocco, at the end of January 2019. 
In the following days and weeks, his seemingly double life gets exposed. Marco would apparently help Moroccan and Spanish politicians make real estate deals. These deals would be funded by millions of dirty money, according to the Moroccan Times. The Spanish police released even more interesting information. According to them, Marco was involved in the drug trade with criminals from all over Europe. Criminals from Spain, the Netherlands, France, and even Ireland had ties to Marco. The Ireland connection is something you need to remember. We will get to that later. With his extensive network, Marco was not only able to connect the right people with each other, he was also able to profit from it by helping people launder their money and even invested in drug shipments himself. The Irish media knew it for sure. Marco was one of the most important money launderers for none other than the Kinahan cartel. At the end of January, they made it front page news, Kinahan playboy Marco whacked. Well, Daniel Kinahan and many of his associates lived or spent quite some time in Marbella. Him knowing Marco is definitely a good possibility. To add to the suspicion, Spanish police even investigated whether Daniel Kinahan might have ordered the hit on Marco, but that investigation did not take long. Daniel had nothing to do with what happened to Marco directly. However, maybe he did so indirectly. Here is where it gets interesting. Eventually, police investigation revealed that the both of them were close business partners. Marco laundered a huge amount of money for the Kinahans through his business in Marbella. A source in Dublin says he knows exactly why Marco was removed. According to him, Samir Scarface's crew was behind the hit. If Samir Scarface's name does not ring a bell, definitely watch my video for the entire story on his life. Let me explain what the source in Dublin said. We need to rewind back five years to August 2014. Samir Scarface, a Moroccan from Amsterdam, was whacked at a cafe called All in One in Benahavis, Spain. Samir was one of the biggest players in Europe at the time. In the cafe, he had a meetup with fellow Moroccan criminals from Amsterdam, Naufal F and Najib Himish. There has been suspicion that these two were involved in a hit on Samir Scarface in order of someone bigger than them, and that man was rumoured to be Rico the Chilean who in his turn was a confidant, associated and one of the most important suppliers of coke for the Kinahans. Shortly after the incident, Nofal also became an associate of the Kinahans. Coincidence? Or was this an assignment they had to fulfill to become part of the Kinahan cartel? You tell me. Circling back to Marco's passing, the source said that this was a get back for what had happened to Samir. In 2019, all the Kinahans and most of their associates were already living in Dubai, which left Marco as one of the last few left in Marbella. The rumour could be true, it could be false. We will most likely never know for sure. Yet it's necessary to keep the following in mind. There are five years between Samir's passing and Marco's end. Revenge in the underworld usually does not take five years, specifically not when it is someone concerning such a big kingpin as Samir was. Retaliation typically comes much faster and is often aimed at people higher up in the organisation, so it's hard to assume that Marco's end was because of Samir Scarface. That was not the only speculation though. During the time in 2019, there was a serious feud going on in the Costa Blanca. In this rumour, Daniel Kinahan once again plays an important role. Furthermore, this rumour makes much more sense than the other speculations that were going around. In 2017, Russian hitmen attempted a hit on one of Daniel Kinahan's financial men in Portugal. It failed. Nonetheless, this caused a lot of panic within the Kinahan cartel, and many of them chose to move to Dubai in the hopes of escaping any further violence. This led to Marco suddenly being alone in Marbella, without the manpower of the Kinahans behind him, with the feud in the Costa Blanca absolutely running wild. No one was safe. Those with the smallest ties to someone involved in the feud could be whacked at any point without a warning, and in this case, that might have been what happened to Marco. Marco Yakut was deemed to be a king in Marbella. At one point, his life seemed to be filled with success, and nothing could hurt him. He was friends with the wealthiest people, who all had a blast in one of his many establishments on the Golden Mile. Some of those people, however, were some of the biggest criminals in Europe. Especially his friendship with the Kinahans could be the reason he is not here anymore. After a year in 2020, six people were finally arrested for the hit on Marco. Four of them were actually on their way to commit another hit. The other two suspects were arrested in the Netherlands, 
all six of them were part of a hit commando from the Netherlands, which could be hired, and upon request, would deal with anyone without asking any questions. More on them in a later video.